few months ago I designed this jumping actuator which is made from a flexible circuit board. Today I want to take it to the next level. I want to make a frog. This robot is going to use the same flexible PCB concept, but it needs to have an onboard battery and a brain of its own so that we can completely eliminate all the wires. The trickiest part of this design is to have it jump directionally. I don't want to have it bounce randomly around. I came up with a couple of ways to do this, but I think this right here is the simplest and the most efficient. So let's take this mess and design the real thing on Altium. So to prove this concept, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to use the same Bluetooth modules that I use for my other projects, an RGB LED, a switch, and for HB drivers to control the coils. This board is going to be split into two parts, the area of the coils and the region where the electronics will be placed. And the two will be connected by this part over here. Now this board cannot just be connected with one arm, so instead I made four which will be soldered to these parts over here. The layout is almost finished, the biggest headache was this part over here where I had to pass 8 traces. For the 3 other arms I decided um, to also pass the same amount of tracks even though they are not connected to anything so that hopefully they will have the same stiffness. I also decided to try something new and put 3M tape over here, this way the arm can be connected without soldering. So let's make the final touches. And voila, the PCB is finished. I have 8 percent confidence that it's going to work, but I don't know how to make it better. So let's just send it to PCB Way for manufacturing. This is so freaking cool. Let's first test if the 3M tape will hold the arms. This worked much better than I thought it would. So I think we can proceed with the soldering. I don't think it's a good idea to solder it when it's folded like this. So let's start with a fresh PCB. So I currently have a dumb software running to test all the HB drivers and they all seem to be functioning ok. But I noticed one major pop up. Both the battery and programming connectors are going to be connected on the bottom side so when we're going to fold the robot we're not going to have access to them. So what I'm going to do is try to make all the parameters customizable over Bluetooth. So here's how I'm planning to test this robot. I'm first going to test pushing and pulling the magnets and see what happens. 
Then I coded in a jumping sequence which will hopefully work and then I'm also testing pushing the magnets and pulling them while jumping which should increase the jumping height. If any of these two algorithms work we could proceed to phase 3 which would be directional control. With all the coils powered the robot is drawing around 540 milliamps. This will only be the peak current during the jump so I'm going to power the robot using this tiny battery. is fully folded. So I made this setup over here to try and give you the best angle possible. Time to start the test. Let's turn it on. Connect with Bluetooth. Let's start by repelling the magnets. Thing seems to happen. Attracting. Hmm. Okay, time for the jump. Come on. What's happening here? I think one of the coils is not working. Mm. I think only two coils are being powered because these other two coils are not hot. I have to dismantle it. Okay, so I did manage to dismantle the robot, fix the soldering issue and reassemble the whole thing. But once I mounted the magnets, the same thing happened. One of the coils was not working, so again I disassembled it and it happened again. At this point the robot was looking quite crappy. So I decided to start with a fresh new PCB. And this time I found a better method for mounting the magnets. I also decided to first test the robot wired without the LiPo battery. So let's start with attraction. <laughs> it works! Now pushing the magnet, so here we might see some jumping. Uh, the wire might be limiting it. Now for the jumping sequence. It's kind of jumping by a few millimeters. I was pretty sure that the robot was going to jump higher by adding an onboard battery because it will technically accelerate more mass upwards and that's Newton's second law of motion. But I was wrong because the jumping height got reduced to almost nothing. If we compare the two tests we can notice that the extra mass of the battery reduced the velocity at which the magnets are being pushed. This was some very sad news for my robo frog, but to try and get some better jumping results I decided to make some more tests and modifications. The first thing I tried was powering the robot with an external source having the battery still on board. This allowed me to drive the coils with a higher voltage, but nothing improved. The next thing I wanted to try was reducing the weight of the robot. There were only two things that could be eliminated, the upper magnets and the connector. By gluing the lower magnets with the PCB I reduced an extra 1.5 grams of the robot. This lowered the mass to 5.5 grams, but it still wasn't enough to make a huge improvement. By removing the connector and soldering the battery directly, the weight only reduced by a couple of hundred milligrams. I then tried playing around with different frequencies, hoping to generate more energy per bounce. And it definitely made it more energetic, so I kept changing the frequency until I found the code log zone.
Now the frequency could only be tuned in steps of 10 milliseconds, so I decided to open the robot and modify the software to try and find a better resonant frequency. I also took this opportunity to fix some other bugs I found during testing. After going through a bunch of frequencies, I noticed that the highest jump was being made at 12 Hz. At this point I was very curious to test the second algorithm I mentioned in the beginning, and at 12 Hz it didn't work that well, but at lower frequencies it did. And those are all the things that I thought could improve this prototype. Was I happy with the final results? Not really, I really thought it was going to jump at least 1 cm high. The first prototype managed to jump higher than 15 mm, but obviously that measurement is without the battery. The second prototype is much heavier and also has a larger footprint. I couldn't resist from testing the robot with the super thin wire I used in the first video. I think the mass can be further reduced by eliminating the bottom stiffener. Reducing the length of the flexible arms could also make the thing more springy. We can also make them less stiff by passing two tracks per arm instead of eight and remove the 3M tape to solder them directly. I also need to improve the mechanical robustness of the robot because even though it has a stiffener underneath the electronics area, that whole region got bended by the end of the testing. Unfortunately, I didn't arrive at phase 3 to test directional control. I think it's useless to test it at this point, given that the robot is not jumping that high. When designing this robot, I thought it was going to jump perfectly straight to empowering the four magnets, but it's clearly drifting, so it also needs an IMU to compensate for the terror. I'm not sure if I can eliminate one coil and have three instead of four. Directioning the robot would be harder, but it would also reduce the current consumption and also the overall mass, and have less electronics obviously. But all these changes means that I need to completely redesign the PCB, so let me know in the comments if I should make a version 2.